A lot of times I hear people tell me all kinds of things. They tell me, go here, go there, do this, do that, be this, be that. Well, okay, that's nice. And I listen to what they have to say, and I pay attention to what they do, and I kind of watch and see how it works out for them. You know, I'll kind of look at them after a few years and say, hey, how's that working out for you? Does it really work? Okay, cool, I'll try it. And I try it and see, you know, if it works for them or if it works for me. On Vivo, why am I rocking? I got this thing rocking like crazy. On Vivo, I try to share only those things that have worked for me, that in reality are meaning what I say and saying what I mean. I don't example or exemplify some other way of doing things except for what God has told me to do. And then I try to share that in a way that people would say, hey, how do I get saved? And I say, well, bluntly, in a way, I don't know. I mean, I do in some ways, like by faith and by the scriptures and by what the Bible says, but the actual fact of the matter is, is I came to Jesus and asked him and he came to me. I got saved because I came to Jesus. And when I heard about a Christian concert, I went there, you know, and when I heard that you could go forward, I went forward. And when they said, do this, I did that. You know, and I found God and God intervened in my life. And so in that way, it made perfect sense because it worked. Now, people are always telling me what they want to do to add to that. And I always say, well, ask Jesus. And usually, the response is, they get mad at me. <laughs> no, 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 they go, what do you mean? Ask Jesus, come on now, get real. You mean like, read the Bible? Well, no, that's not what I said. You should read your Bible. You should read your Bible every day. Matter of fact, if you read your Bible, you probably learn a lot about life that you didn't know about. You know, like how to do things, how to live, you know, a better life, how to act in ways that you might not have thought of, you know, kind of like I watch people when they don't know what they're doing, and I watch people when they do know what they're doing, and I kind of like the people that know what the Bible says about what they should be doing. They kind of make sense to me because. I look around and I see lots of things that don't make sense. But people that read the Bible seem to make sense, at least to me. So when I say, ask Jesus, I really am talking about, you know, the person, Jesus. You know, the person that didn't die but he rose again, that he went to heaven and then he spoke from the heavens and he said that he would send another comforter but that he also promised that he would be with us always even unto the end of the age and that even he would come into us and sup with us and you know like speak to us and he would be our shepherd and we would hear his voice and those kind of things you know really that's what I mean when I say ask Jesus because I'm not saying you know put your hands together and pray hard I didn't say pray did I I said, ask. Because you see, Jesus, when I read his words for the first time before I ever got saved, it said, ask and you would receive. And I went, well, that's cool. And I said, seek and you would find. I went, well, that's cool. And I said, knock and doors should be open. And I said, well, that's cool. And later on, people would tell me, you know, well, you got to do this, you know, mumbo jumbo thing, you know, and they would come up with these weird gyrations or motivations or kind of speculations about what they felt like. I should do in order to be saved or get saved. Well, I really didn't do any of them, you know, and I kind of didn't do everything the way that most people did do. Does that mean I'm not saved? I don't know. Ask Jesus. It's interesting to me is that all of life, as I read it, from cover to cover in the Bible, from Genesis all the way through Revelation, I see God being real and man having to talk and react to God in some way. One way or another, God seems to always get man's attention, even when man doesn't believe in him in the first place. Somehow, God seems to always have gotten man's attention. 
whether it be in creation, you know, when Cain slew Abel, or whether it be like in the flood, or when Jonah's saying, hey, you know what, I don't want to go warn those people, I, you know, I want to go somewhere else, you know, and he runs the opposite direction and rebels against God, and God uses him anyways. You know, kind of sucks him up, you know, and sucks, spits him out, you know, and puts him in the right place at the right time. Looking a little weird, but maybe, we don't know. But, you know, God seemed to intervene in that way, and then he speaks directly to all these different people. You know, Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel, uh, Abraham, uh, Jacob, Isaac, I mean, Paul, the disciples. I mean, I, I, I seem to read this Bible, you know, and I keep looking at it and going, I don't think they were reading the Torah, you know, and suddenly said, you know, if you read it, you'll hear God speak. I kind of think God spoke to him direct. You know, like how people would say to me all the time, you know, well, if God would just reveal himself, and I always say, really? Can I quote you on that? Can I talk to you, you know, over here, off to the side, you know, off camera, and let's get real, you know, when nobody's looking, and do you really want God to reveal himself? He will. And I take him, you know, to, you know, sometimes the Bible, sometimes direct, sometimes weird things happening, which was really weird to me. But I'd say, so you really want to talk to God, huh? I don't think you'll do what he says, but that's okay. It's between you and God. If you really want to know God, if you really want to get personal, if you really want to get real, you know, and I'd, I'd, I'd question him, you know, I'd say, how real do you want to get? And sometimes people take that warning literally, which is what I mean it by. And when I ask them, do you really want to know? Some wise people have said, no, they don't want to know. Because, you see, somewhere along the line, somebody's going to put the rubber meets the road to you. And they're going to say, put up or shut up. Quit acting like you know God when you don't. Quit pretending like you're a Christian when you aren't. Quit saying that you know Jesus when you don't. Because, put it bluntly, the world is looking for those that do know him. They have this idea that those that know Jesus are going to act like Jesus. You know, not gun-toting, God-swearing, you know, flag-saluting people, you know, that are running around, you know, trying to kill each other or, you know, kill other people. But, you know, those ones that, you know, were trying to save the world, you know, that would die for their friends and their enemies, that would witness to everyone everywhere about the love of God. You know, those kind of Christians. You know, not the other kind that, you know, call themselves Christians that are more patriotic and serve that God than they do Jesus, much less the Heavenly Father who looks down upon the wicked and the good. So you see, I, I, I'm always interested about how real or how much or how little people really want of God. Because this is utmost for his highest. You see, we're doing these videos, this series, because we're wanting to give all that we are. Now, that's what I wanted when I got saved. I wanted all. I didn't want a little. I didn't want a tiny bit. I didn't want to say, maybe I'll change my mind down the road and I'm going to go a different way or, you know, backslide, which I did at different times, but I still wanted God. But you see, in utmost, we want to give all of the uttermost of ourselves to God. Because we want to demonstrate, not just by our lifestyle, not just by the fact that we do hear God speak and that we can see Him at different times and He reveals Himself, or that He does miraculous things in our lives that we just have no explanation for, neither does everybody else. They just look at us and go, wow, that must be God. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but, and we don't want to be belligerent about it, but it's kind of like, well, doesn't God speak to you? No? Oh. Okay. How much do you really want God? So, there is a part of me when I tell people, come to Jesus or ask Jesus that gets a little kind of like burned out by saying over and over again, how real do you really want to get? Because until you really want to know God, you really aren't going to. You're just going to walk around the fringe, you know, kind of like those people that follow Jesus, like the crowds, you know. They were always far away from how close they could have gotten. They didn't want to be up in front and center because, after all, they saw what Jesus did. 
he told some people, come follow me. And they said, uh, wait, we have to go bury our father first. He said, no, you cannot be my disciple. He said, come follow me. And they went, well, first we have to go and do this. And he said, no, you can't be my disciple. You know, those kind of people. You know, that they don't want to be up front challenged by what Jesus would say because, after all, we say we want to be his disciple. But do we? Do you really want to be a disciple of Jesus? Or do you just want to be a follower? Or do you just want to sit in a pew, take it easy, kick back, relax, and see what God might do? Maybe. As long as we're in a crowd, you know, follow the crowd. Yeah. We want to be in the crowd when the crowd gets raptured. So we want everyone to go so that we go too. Okay. I don't want to look in the book of Revelation because it makes me a little nervous there. You know, kind of like that book that's at the end of the Bible. You know, where it says many are called and few are chosen and that blessed are you if you overcome because some people aren't going to. Some people aren't going to make it. Some people are going to fall away. Some people are going to, you know, like be caught up with the Lord in the air. And that Paul prayed to be counted worthy. Man, I think I need to re-examine my uttermost for his highest or my utmost that I'm willing to give because how much am I willing to give of myself to God or am I just putting God on the back burners till Sunday and then if he's got the right message that's for me I'll appropriate it when I want it in the meantime I'll just act like I didn't hear it and I'll pretend you know that I don't hear no evil see no evil speak no evil and get away with my brand of Christianity because after all I've labeled it as a denomination or a sect or a faith or a personal point of view or a personal relationship but you see the only question I got again is what happens when you ask Jesus and he answers what do you do then well if you're like me you're screwed because <laughs> to put it bluntly you don't get away with all these excuses you don't get away with all these contrary ideas you know God's real and you have to deal with it literally and you don't have much time left because after all you have heard God speak getting there come to me Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28 where sin and sorrow stops and the song of the saints starts. Do I really want to get there? I can right now. The questions that truly matter in life are remarkably few, and they are all answered by these words. Come to me. Our Lord's words are not, do this, or don't do that. You've heard those, haven't you? Somewhere at some point in time. But, come to me. If I will simply come to Jesus, my real life will be brought into harmony with my real desires. I will actually, believe it or not, cease from sin. And I will find a song of the Lord beginning in my life. Oh sure, it won't happen overnight, but it is a process that you can take delight in. Because you will see that as you delight in the Lord, He'll give you the desires of your heart. Have you ever come to Jesus? Have you ever come to him really or just begged that he would take you? Look at the stubbornness of your heart. You would rather do anything than this one simple childlike thing which is come to me. If you really want to experience ceasing from sin, you must come to Jesus. It's not about how good you are or how bad you are. It's not about what you did or didn't do or what you think you can stop from doing when you quote unquote want to. Jesus makes himself the test to determine your genuineness. Look how he used the word come. At the most unexpected moments in your life there is this whisper from the Lord, come to me. And you are immediately drawn to him. Personal contact with Jesus changes everything. Be foolish enough to come and commit yourself to what he says. Listen and pay attention. Do as he speaks. 
the attitude necessary for you to come to him is one where your will has made the determination to let go of everything and deliberately commit it all to him in his keeping so he takes care of you oh sure you know how to take care of yourself and how's that working out for you and I will give you rest that is I will sustain you causing you to stand firm he's not saying I will put you to bed or I will hold your hand or I will sing you to sleep but in essence he's saying I will get you out of bed out of your listlessness out of your purposelessness out of your own idealisms out of your own religiosity out of your own religious expression and out of your condition of being half dead while you are still alive I will penetrate you with the spirit of life and you will be sustained by the perfection of vital activity yet we become so weak and pitiful and talk about suffering the will of God where is the majestic vitality and power of the Son of God in that? I'll tell you, I read it all the time on the internet. I see it all the time in life. I hear it even from pastors and teachers and elders and theologians and deacons and people that make videos and people that, you know, sell Christian books. And they all tell me kind of the same thing. You know, if you do this, this will happen. If you do that, that will happen. If you're like this, then this is what you get. If you're like that, then that's what you get. But you know, I don't hear that many of them say, come to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Ask Him. Let Him lead you. They always want to tell you what you should do or what I should do. They never leave it in His hands for Him to tell you personally alone what to do. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little weird. <laughs> could be maybe I'm a little strange that's possible maybe as hot as it is today I'm heat fatigued oh I saw the Lord or maybe there's something more to Christianity than sucking your thumb and acting like you know what you've done I think Jesus knew what he was talking about when he said my sheep hear my voice and they know me I think if you haven't heard God speak to you there's more to your life than you realize and more to come than you've ever dreamed or imagined before because it's not Jesus speaking through a man to you but Jesus will speak to you personally alone and direct that's why you have the words that Jesus said come to me he didn't say come to church and find me he didn't say come to you know the rabbi or the minister or the preach or the preacher or the teacher or the rabbi or this that or the other thing the butcher the baker the candlestick maker or you know your loved one or you have to go through some man or some woman or some special anointing he didn't say that As a matter of fact I think that's why the people followed him was because all the scribes and the Pharisees kept saying you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to go here and you got to go there I don't see that you know what I do see? I see Jesus saying, come to me.